Tonight, we bring you a story that was never supposed to happen. Melissa Oden is a wife, a mother, and a social worker. She was not expected to be here, but she is. Tonight, part one of Unexpected Survival, the Melissa Oden story. What shape is that? A smile we were never supposed to see. A voice nearly silenced. How about the 33-year-old Melissa Oden is a woman who almost never was. What's that? A ducky. a ducky? The tender sound of a mother and daughter that melts a heart and builds a bond. Melissa and her husband Ryan were blessed with the birth of their daughter Olivia two years ago. Being a mother is the best thing that ever happened to me. Melissa and Ryan were married in October 2005. Melissa, a social worker. Ryan, a computer technician. <laughs> They are the American dream that almost never came true. You know, I should have been dead. They left me for dead. You see, she was never supposed to live. On August 24th of 1977, according to medical records, a 19-year-old unmarried mother came to the hospital for what's known as a saline infusion abortion. It actually involves injecting a caustic saline or salt solution into the amniotic fluid surrounding the unborn baby. And the intent of that salt solution is to scald the baby to death from the outside in. Records show three days later, on August 27th, a Pitocin drip was started. Pitocin is used to induce labor. It was repeated on the 28th and continued on the 29th, when finally, five days after it began, the abortion was complete. I was delivered in bed by a nurse and I was left for dead, and understandably believed to be dead. But there was only one problem. The baby did not die. As they tended to my biological mother, I started to make grunting noises and small movements, and the nurse that delivered me stepped in and started to provide me care. Only two pounds, 14 and a half ounces, and by no means guaranteed survival. I was too weak to suck from a bottle, and so they had to shave my head and feed me intravenously. Medical records show she was taken to the intensive care nursery, but this little, unnamed baby, aborted but not killed, was not about to give up. She was transferred to a hospital in Iowa City. The nurses there gave me a name because they felt sorry for me, because I still wasn't named at that time, so the nurses there named me Katie Rose. They knitted me clothes and booties. I still have some of them with me still today. Katie Rose, the name written on the top of this record of her tiny footprints. But she wouldn't stay Katie Rose for long. In October of 1977, a couple with one adopted daughter chose to adopt her too, despite her poor prognosis. The doctors didn't believe that I would live for very long, and if I did live, that I would probably be disabled. Undeterred, the couple brought her home in October, before she was ever due to be born in the first place. In a normal pregnancy, she would have still been in the womb, but instead, she had already defied death, found a family, and gained a permanent name. From here forward, this little miracle would be named Melissa. She finally had a name and a family, but how would she deal with knowing she was not supposed to be alive? Would she try to trace her roots? And if so, what would she find? The answer tomorrow night in the conclusion of Unexpected Survival, the Melissa Oden story.